Congratulations, you found your first meteorite. Now what do you do? Stay tuned for those answers. Fireball Steve here to help you with the fun challenges like how you can sell your meteorite once you've found one. What's my meteorite worth is the most common question I hear after, is this a meteorite? Determining value is a very hard question to answer. What is a coin worth? What is a house worth? Lots of factors go into determining that answer. And even so, it is still just often an educated guess. Even more so with meteorites. Here's the brutal truth. Meteorites are almost worthless. Now, a lot of people are gonna hate me for saying that, but honestly, they're just rocks. Meteorites do not contain valuable metals you can sell. Meteorites can't be melted down to harvest their gold or platinum or rare contents. The real value in meteorites is with the information they contain. And to be honest, science only needs a very small piece of any meteorite to pretty much harvest the important information. So after the first couple of grams, the rest is overkill. But there is a collector market that will buy meteorites. When it comes to fireballs and the rocks that are produced, if we would know ahead of time how many grams and how many pieces and how big those pieces would be and how many people would line up to want to buy a piece, we can know with quite a nice amount of certainty what the meteorite would be worth. But my crystal ball has fallen on the floor and it's broken, so I can't tell the future. So it's pretty much a guess. So let me give you a little bit of the guidelines when it comes to value. First of all, meteorites tend to be worth more closer to the fireball event that produced them. So if you find a meteorite the day of the fall, generally speaking, more people will want to snag a piece and move on knowing they have a piece in their collection. Dealers also tend to want to purchase specimens early so they can immediately start reselling and making money now rather than a week from now or a month from now or a year from now. If there's evidence that there are a lot of pieces to compete with yours, this generally has a downward pressure on the prices and values that people are willing to pay. Generally speaking, meteorites that are fresher are worth more. And by fresher, a big factor is if there are rains that will have contaminated the specimen. Just as condition plays a big role in things such as coin collecting, it has a role to play here. And scientifically speaking, the more pristine rocks are, often they are more highly valued. Generally speaking, small meteorites are worth more than larger meteorites on a per gram basis. There's several reasons for this. First of all, there are more people with small amounts of disposable income to purchase a meteorite. Some collectors just want a piece, and if there's a five gram piece that can scratch the itch, why bother buying a hundred gram or a one kilo rock? So with more competition at the lower price tags, it's easier for some people to stretch a few dollars more to snag it. Some meteorites can be worth tens of thousands of dollars, and in that price range, sellers will often be far more competitive and be willing to sell for a lower price per gram because in total, it's a lot of money. Then we have greed that seems to kick in. Of course, sellers want to sell a rock they find for as much as they can, and buyers want to buy a rock for as low of a price as they can. This goes for both collectors and meteorite dealers, but the meteorite dealers tend to be more sensitive not to overpay, or they may end up being stuck with a rock they cannot move to anyone else because the prices can and often do drop radically in a very short period of time. Be mindful, somebody could walk their dog and find a meteorite worth $10,000, but the biggest offer they may get is $5,000. So they hold out hoping to get more. Meanwhile, 10 or 20 other people go out walking their dogs and they also find rocks and flood the market with them. And a few days later, there might be nobody willing to pay even $1,000. And the first finder will be kicking themselves for not taking the $5,000 offer when they had it.
Very few institutions have much money budgeted to purchase meteorites. So taking your rock to your local university or the nearest natural history museum, thinking they have lots of money to just cut you a check is a fallacy. Sometimes institutions will make purchases, but oftentimes the red tape can stretch out for months before a deal can be finalized. And if the deal falls through, you may find yourself trying to sell a rock that is now worth a lot less. Then you also have the very real threat that another fireball will fly over some other part of the world and drop rocks there and everyone chases after them. And these rocks that were so hot and in demand one day have all of a sudden become old news and nobody cares about them anymore. Oftentimes, dealers of meteorites are interested in purchasing meteorites so they can take them to institutions and do trades with them. This is a win-win as institutions don't have to spend the limited money they have and they have an opportunity to trade out old surplus material they don't need so they can acquire the new material that can provide both research and preservation material for the future. This can be a great option for the meteorite dealer. However, 99 plus percent of the people who are not collectors or dealers have no desire to barter part of their newly found rock for other meteorites. There are some famous large auction houses that will sell meteorites, but to get a specimen into those auctions can often take six months to a year of pre-planning and all too often your rock that is hot, figuratively speaking, today has cooled way off by the time the next big meteorite auction rolls around. Of course, you have the option of selling on eBay or by Facebook Marketplace. A lot of people do that. The problem is, if the competitive bidders are not secure in feeling that this is a safe transaction, they often won't take the risk and bid the item up. You can often see on eBay two almost identical meteorites from a new fall up for sale, one by Billy Bob Local, who has three positive feedback selling, and the other by a famous, well-established, trustworthy meteorite dealer. And the dealer's rock will get double or triple the selling price of what the other one would get. Many times people are buying the story that comes with the rock. Who found it? Where they found it? How they found it? It all adds to the provenance in the story. For example, if I found a 10 gram meteorite in the same place at the same time as you found an identical meteorite, people will often be willing to pay more for mine because they know who I am either personally or maybe because of my TV show. On February 1st, 2019, coincidentally, that's my birthday, a meteorite exploded over Cuba. And while this was an ordinary chondrite, meaning most likely not a lot of scientific breakthroughs would be learned from this rock, we saw the first pieces selling for around $75 per gram. A couple months later, another meteorite fell in Costa Rica that was super rare. It was a carbonaceous chondrite with a tremendous amount of scientific value. All of a sudden, people were like, Cuba who? Everybody was after the new rocks. I was able to buy some of the Cuban meteorite for just $3 a gram. I sliced it up and sold it for $9 to $10 a gram on eBay, which was a much lower price than at the start for the buyers. If anybody heard or saw someone getting $75 a gram and had a piece of that specimen and held out wanting to get $75 as well, they're still sitting on their rocks to this day. So while I would love to conclude this episode by telling you this is exactly how much your new meteorite that you found is worth, it's simply impossible to do. But let me say this, if you found a new meteorite, I'm very interested in looking at it and making you an offer to buy it. Not only are smaller meteorites generally worth more per gram than larger ones, value can be added to specimens by cutting them up. I know that sounds sacrilegious as you would never cut up a Rembrandt or a rare coin, but with meteorites, the protocol often is to slice them open to be able to study them. Cutting rocks and prepping them takes time and money, and part of the rocks end up as sawdust, all adding some cost. 
but also adding value because often collectors are willing to pay a premium for nicely prepared specimens. If you're willing to invest the time to cut and prep meteorites yourself or to spend the money to have a professional do it for you, then you could take the smaller pieces that are now worth more per gram and try to sell them individually over time. But it's almost like a farmer wanting to open a bakery. Yes, he can maximize the value of the wheat he's growing in his field by making pastries to sell at full retail, but being a baker is a radically different occupation than also being a farmer. The same applies here. A lot of people chase meteorites and fireballs almost like fishermen chase fish. They do it for the sport of it, not for the profit. So if you don't care about money and you just want adventure, you very well may be someone who will find a meteorite and never be tempted to part with it. Or you may be happy to have your rock chopped in half and keep half, and then you sell the other half. Now you get your cake and get to eat it too. Bottom line is, when you find a meteorite, get a hold of me and I'll tell you what it's worth to me. And if you can find someone else that's willing to pay more, great. If not, maybe we can do some business. My contact information is in the description down below. If this episode has helped you, please click like. And always remember, anybody can find a meteorite, especially you now.